Hey guys, and welcome to the Gypsy Bird Makes Podcast. I'm Bethany, and this is episode 16. So thank you guys for being patient and waiting an extra day to get this podcast. I just didn't have time to film it before today, the 5th, which is the day that it's supposed to go up. But um, hopefully you guys will enjoy the content that I have for you guys. I have five finished objects and one work in progress to share with you and a few future makes also. We also have the stash update for February, which is quite, quite a lot of numbers actually. So I'm excited to share that with you. Today I am wearing my OG Boxy. This is the Boxy by Hohi Locatelli. This is the fingering weight version. I made this in Southern Storytime's Jenny colorway. I used helical knitting and used I think four different skeins to helically knit this. Absolutely love it. One of my favorite makes of all time. Um, it was just over a year ago that I finished this. Um, and we all know that I love the Boxy so much. Uh, so yeah, I'm super excited about this. Um, I am also going to be announcing giveaway winners at the end of the episode, so stick around for that. If you watched the last episode and told me where you would like to go, I loved reading all the comments, so thank you guys for those and seeing where everyone would go. It was just so awesome. So let's go ahead and get into some of these finished objects. It is finished. I am so excited to have the corgi sweater finally done. Uh, it look at it. Oh my gosh, it looks so cool. Doesn't it look cool? Oh my gosh, it goes all the way around. Oh, I am loving this. Um, it is quite big. Um, I this yarn stretched a lot, and I all I did was lay it out. Um, but it's finished and I am so, so excited about it. Um, and I know someone else who's gonna be very excited too. Uh, so yeah, I'm loving it. I had to change into it so you guys could see. Um, it is definitely oversized. Uh, I could have probably gone down like two sizes and it would have fit, but I love it. I actually did it, guys. I did it. How cool is that? Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's get some details about that. I have it all written down here. So this is the Corgi sweater and it is by Rose Marion. All the Ravelry pages will be linked down below for you in under each segment that I talk about it. I used Knit Pick Swish DK um, and it looks really good. It's really warm. It's worked great. I used black, which probably wasn't my best idea because we have so many animals that it's, it's hairy. It's hairy right now and it hasn't even been worn. So anyways, um, it is Swish DK. I used four different colors for it. So the black is just their regular black. And then this um, brownish color right here is called Allspice. Then we have the white, which is just white. And the little pink that is here for the ears and such is Blossom Heather. Um, I love it. It's so good and it's comfy. I think this is going to be perfect for her. She'll probably wear it like with when she gets chilly in her room or whatever. The sleeves also turned out a little bit long, but I'd rather them be a little long than too short. So that worked out well. Um, yeah, I'm just so excited to have this done, guys. I, as if you watched the last podcast, then you'll know that I ran out of the black yarn. So I had to wait to finish it until the more black came in. And when that came in, I finished it in like three days because I was so done with it and wanted it done. <laughs> Um, I started this on January 2nd and finished on February 24th, so less than two months of work, but I really would have liked it done sooner, but it is what it is. I'm really excited to be able to gift this to her um, and get some pictures of her with her Corgi Atticus um, and this, and that'll be really fun. So um, I took some notes about how much yarn I used of each in case you're thinking about making this. I did make the largest size, but like I said, I probably could have gone down two different sizes um, because it stretched quite a bit. Like, yeah, she's smaller than me and like my body's right here. So there's a lot that I could have like shrunk it quite a bit. But I also had never done 
a color work yoke before and I really wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to do it too small. I also, my gauge was a little off, so I take that all into consideration. First time doing this much color work, yoke, and all that jazz. So I'm happy with it. I think it turned out really good. Um, I did do a few different things than what the pattern called for. The pattern is honestly quite vague. Um, so keep that in mind. For someone who had never done a color work yoke before, um, I would have appreciated a little more guidance, um, but it worked out all in the end. So a few things that I did differently um, is, well, I did quite a few things differently. So it says to do the entire yoke, um, the entire color work in the yoke, but I split under I split under the corgis um, because I knew it was just going to be too long of a yoke if I kept going that way. Um, so I split and then I did the color work on the arms as well as on the body. Um, and then I also did tubular bind off on all the edges, which wasn't called for. Um, but I really like how that looks, so I decided to do that. Um, I didn't follow any of the guidelines on decreasing for the body or the sleeves. I just decreased as much as I wanted. I decreased um, quite a bit down the sleeve, and then I did a, um, a rapid decrease right before the um, cuffs just to kind of cinch it in a little bit. And I really like how that turned out. Um, for the body, I did something different as well. I did a low high hem, hem um, which I'd never done before, but I'd seen other people do it and I wanted to try it. So that is what I did. And I think it turned out really well. Let me see if I can show you what it looks like. I'm not sure if I'll be able to, um, but yeah, you can kind of see. So this one does go down farther in the back for the hem. And I did the split hem, which it doesn't call for, but I thought it would look nicer. And yeah, you can see there, I still have some ends that need to be cut, but I didn't want to do that till after I blocked it. And I just blocked it the night before last. So need to cut those, but I really like how it turned out. You can see there's little specks of, of animal, but yeah, the back looks good. I really like it. I'm so happy to have it done. Um, I had to try it on for you to show you. Um, it's really hot though, so just keep that in mind. Um, but oh, I love it so much. All right, I wanted to tell you how much yarn I used. I think I said that earlier and then completely got distracted on something else. So let me see. So for the pink color, which you use right here and on the ears and the mouth, um, I used 30 grams of yarn for that. For the white, which you see use a bit more of in the different areas, I ended up using 45 grams. And then the allspice, which is the brown, I used 65 grams. So almost a skein and a half from Knit Pick since they're 50 gram skeins. And then the black, I ended up using 536 grams. Um, I did make it longer than the pattern called for because I just wanted to make it a bit longer. My cats have the zoomies. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, that was what I did. And I also decreased in the body quite a bit, about 20 stitches, I think. And I ended up using a US 4 for the cuffs, which is a 3.5 millimeter, and a US 5 for the color work and body, which is a 3.75 millimeter. Um, yeah. Oh, I just, looking at it in the camera, I'm really, really pleased with how it with how the corgis came out. I mean, they could totally be better. Um, anything could be better, but I think that it looks really good. She likes it, my daughter, and really that's all that matters. So I'm so happy with it. I think it looks good. I definitely wanna do more color work yokes. Um, maybe in a fingering weight, there's some Star Wars sweaters that I have in my um, favorites on Ravelry that I would really like to try and make. Um, and since I've seen this one and I know I can do it and I know that it's not, that it'll turn out looking pretty good, um, I think I'll be able to try those hopefully in the future. So we'll see. Um, total, I thought this was really fun. So I'm really into all the numbers of how many grams and how many yards I'm using this year. And um, I thought it was really fun to see how many grams and how many yards this project itself 
had. So in total, there were 676 grams used for this sweater. And again, I could have gone down several different sizes. Um, and it still would have been great, but I think an oversized is going to work out just fine for her too because she's going to wear it over a t-shirt or something like that. Um, and the yards was 1,662.96 yards, which is a lot. <laughs> I love that so much. So this is finally done. We don't have to talk about it any more. I am so thankful and I'm sure you're thankful for it too, um, but yay! It's done. There are two other things I want to show you with the corgi sweater before we move on to the next finished object. And one is these cute little handmade tags that I used. I put this in so that she'll know which is the front and the back without having to look at the hem or the short rows or anything like that because that's going to confuse the 14 year old. <laughs> so I put this in and I absolutely love these tags. I got them back in December when we were in Colorado and they are labels by Kat M. You can see here, she has a whole bunch of different ones. Um, I believe she's based out of Australia. I will have these linked down below for you guys. I really, really love them. I think they just make your knitted garment or crochet garment look that much more polished and like finished and I really love that. So I would highly recommend these. I just used um, some thread and a needle and just sewed them on um, and I think it looks, it kind of gives it that finished like real look so that's cool. I mean it's real but you know what I mean. And I want to show you my floaty floats. So here are all my floats. Oh my gosh. So many floats. I don't know if these look good or not but they're my floats. And they, they turned out okay, I think. So this has been blocked um, and it's still actually a tiny bit damp. All of these floats and the color work are making it take a minute to, to dry, but that's the back. <laughs> Here's the front. But yeah, there we have it. It's really cool. I really love it. I also did the um, tubular bind off on the bottom of it as well. And I think it just gives it a little bit of a more polished look. So that was that. The next finished object I have to share with you is a little something different. I mentioned this, I don't know, in one of the previous podcasts, probably in January or the very beginning of February, where in the Love and Stitches membership, we are doing a, for February, we did a try something new. And we had an interview with Laura Nelkin, who is a, a crochet and kind of like bead expert or knitting expert, I don't know. She designs and uses beads. And anyways, we got to have like a workshop with her on Zoom, which was really fun. And beforehand, you could purchase kits to buy to make a bracelet and use the color or use the beads and learn how to use beads. And I'd never used beads with my knitting before. Um, and I was really, really wanting to learn and see how hard it actually was because there's some patterns that I have knit, but they didn't, they had called for beads, but I didn't use the beads. So we had that, um, and this was kind of what it came in. So you can see the little, it's called a mingle bracelet, um, and it is not hard at all. Um, it comes with, it came in this little thing with all the product, everything that you needed for it. Um, all you needed was like your, you can crochet it or you can knit it, um, and it came with all the things you need. So you got the thread and the beads, and then this little floss threader, um, which you use for the, for the actual threading of the beads. Um, and I made one. So this is the one that I made. It is not perfect by any means, um, but this is what it looks like. Um, you got the little thing. I think I might've been showing you the wrong side. I'm not sure. Here, I'll show you the other side just for good measure. But it was really fun. I made this in about an hour or so. Um, the hardest part, I think, was not mixing up which row I was on. I think I did that a couple times, and that's why some of the beads, some of the beads stick out a little funny. Um, and threading the beads, that was that took the most amount of time, really. Uh, but it was so fun to do, and I'm not scared to use beads in a project anymore. Um, so that was my try something new. Um, yeah, 
It was fun. I would definitely suggest if you haven't tried knitting or crocheting with beads to get a little kit like this one. Um, I think this one's like $20 and it comes with the pattern. She has links to video tutorials on how to do it. Um, and it's a really simple pattern and it'll get you not scared of beads if you're scared like me. I just realized I lied and I have six finished objects. <laughs> Oh goodness. Anyways, on to the next one. So my next one is the Montrealer. Um, this is a pattern by Designs by Dells and this knit up so quickly. I could not believe how fast it knit up. Um, but yeah, I, I loved it. it. Maybe it's because it's worsted weight and I'm more used to working with like um, fingering weight most of the time, but it went so fast. So I used Wool of the Andes yarn, which is Knit Picks. Um, I used three different colors, and I'll talk about those in just a minute, but would you like to see it? Here it is. It comes with the hood. So we got the big old hood here, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then the body with the pocket, and there are still strings attached because I blocked it, but I haven't cut the tack, cut the um, strands off yet. But this pattern I made for my son Kai, who's my middle kiddo. Um, he had said that he wanted a pullover, so I thought this would be a great pattern. Um, there is, There are two different versions of this pattern. He has a kid's version and an adult version. I went with the adult version because um, my son is 12, and he's kind of in between the kid sizes and the adult sizes. And I wanted this to last a little longer than just like this winter season. Um, so I made the size three, which will give him hopefully a little bit more wear out of it. Um, and he's going to get a growth spurt soon. I know it. And then he's probably going to be way too big for it. Um, but that's okay. So I used a US 7, which I believe the pattern calls for. I could be wrong, I'm not sure. Um, but that's a 4.5 millimeter. And then I also used a US 6, which is a four millimeter for the ribbing and such. Um, this was a really fun pattern. I'm gonna be making it again because my youngest wants it and then my husband will probably want one too. Um, but yeah, it was fun. It went really fast. I made this in 11 days, super, super fast. Um, I was working on this after, when I was waiting for the yarn for the corgi sweater and yeah it went so fast and then once I got the yarn for the corgi sweater I wanted to keep working on this and not on <laughs> the corgi sweater but then I was like I need to get that done and then I can just focus on this and not feel guilty so that's what I did. I did a few changes since this is an adult pattern and I'm making it for a kid um, I had to shorten it a little bit. I had him try it on um, and I had to shorten the body by about 20 rows um, because it was just going to be like down to his knees if I kept going. So I shortened that. I also had to shorten the pocket then, as you can see right here, there's a fun little pocket. Um, I shortened that however many rows that I shortened for, um, for the body. And then what else did I do? I guess that's all I did with, sh with shortening and also the sleeves were shortened too. Um, I had him try them on and I'm pretty sure they're going to be a little long, but that's what I wanted so that he can grow into them. Um, I did the striping as the pattern suggests you do it. And if I make this again, which I will be, I will make the hood much smaller. Um, this I think is ginormous. I would probably cut off about, I don't know an inch and a half of the top of this. And I also did not do the drawstring because I didn't think that it would get used at all. Um, but something I really liked about this pattern is the edging that you can see. Let's see. Yeah, the edging that you see there um, is stockinette and then it's rolled over and you tack it down. I really liked how that was. I like the look of it. It kind of gives it a little oomph to it. You also do that down here on the pocket. Um, and I think it looks really nice and really finished. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. I like how the pattern turned out. I'll probably be sick of it by the time I'm done making it again, <laughs> but it worked out well. And I also did one other different thing is I did another tubular bind off for the sleeves and the bottom, um, bottom hem. Um, but yeah, so I was talking about how 
this is a little bit of a rough wool. It is 100% wool. It um, is a bit scratchy. I soaked it extra long in some lanolin filled wool wash um, to see if that would help it at all. And it does feel a little softer than it was, which I'm grateful for because every time he turned it on or tried it on, he's like, oh, itchy. And I'm like, oh, really? Really? I'm going to make this and then you're not going to wear it. So there is the possibility that he will not wear it because he says it's itchy. Um, but we will see. It is made for him and he will at least have that. Um, I think, I don't know. I can't decide if I'm going to order this yarn to make my youngest the same thing or if I'm going to go with a different yarn. Um, I struggle with the getting a different yarn because then my middle kid's going to be like, well, why does he get that yarn? And then you know, if you're a parent and you have more than one, you understand what I'm going through. Like, do I get it and do it or do I not? I don't know. I'll have to decide. I need to decide soon because I want to order it soon. Um, but I mean, it's not bad. It's not scratchy anymore. It definitely softened up some, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, I need to have him try this on actually. He hasn't tried it on since I finished it, but I really like how it all worked out. Um, so let me tell you, I said I was going to tell you what the colors of the wool are. So the blue here is, oh no, I lied. The blue is deft heather. Yeah, delft heather is what this blue, main blue is. And then the gray main stripe color is called lake ice heather. And the green right here is called green tea heather. So those are the colors that I chose. His favorite color is blue, so I figured that would work really well. And I liked the, the green for the accent color. Um, for the, the main color for the striping, so the, the silver right there, I used 100 grams. I literally had such a little amount left that I was worried on my last sleeve that I wasn't going to have enough, but I had less than a gram left when I finished the sleeve. So I won that yarn chicken. So thankful. Um, and then for the green, I used 12 grams. So hardly anything at all. Um, and for the main blue color, I used 424 grams. So for the entire sweater, it was 536 grams and 1,179.2 yards. So I think that worked out really great. I, it was a super fast knit, worked out really great. Um, and I will be making it again. So that's a great one if you're looking for a pattern for one of your guys in your life. Um, I know that Designs by Delft has a lot of great patterns um, and Max the Knitter also. So definitely check those out if you are looking for one for your man. These next three finished objects that I'm going to share with you are objects that were going to be works in progress until it got delayed of my filming this podcast and I just finished them all. So I'm going to go ahead and show you in the finished objects because they are finished objects. So the first one is my husband's muscle burl. This is a pattern by Yozolda Teague. I love this pattern. I've made several of these as you've seen. I use a US 3 3.25 millimeter for my muscle burrows. Um, and this one is for my husband, so it had to be the largest size. Um, let me get the yarn out so I can show you what it is. This yarn was gifted to me by my friend Jill. So thank you, Jill, for this. Um, my husband is going to like it. He already does like it. So it is a tree house knits. And this was called Love Struck. And let me show you the hat. So if you're not interested, if you've never, if you're not interested, good Lord. If you have never made a muscle burr before, what you do is you cast on at this end, you cast on at one end, you do all of your increases, and then you knit stuck net forever um, until you get down to where the pattern calls or you decide and you start decreasing and you decrease all the way to the end and you get this nice long tubular weird looking thing so and then what you'll do is you take it and you put one half in and match it up this one's really really long um, and there you have it you have this hat 
and you can wear it as a slouchy, which this one is going to be very, very slouchy, as you can see. Very slouchy. My hair is not the best for this, but this is a very slouchy one. Or this one's going to be too long to do it because my husband's head's a lot bigger. But you could roll it up and wear it like this. So this one is a single ply yarn, which I've never used for a muscle bra before, but I really like how it turned out. Um, and this one is really big. It's even big on my husband's head. Um, so I think he's going to wear it kind of like a softy, which is super cute, I think. Um, but I love this yarn. It was so pretty to work with. It's definitely my husband's colors of red, black. Um, and yeah, I finished it. I cast this on a couple weeks ago and then finished it two nights ago. So it was a pretty quick knit as well. Um, and I used almost all of the yarn. This is all that I have left. So I would call that a win. I'm really happy with that. This muscle burl took, oh, let me see. It should be on my Ravelry how much it took. Um, I wanted to keep track of exactly how much it took. And this one took 97 grams to make. So the skein was a little over, I think it was 105 grams when I started. So yeah, I only have eight grams left, which is wild. Um, but yeah, that was another finished object. Now I can gift that to him, which I'm really excited about. Um, and now he has two muscle burls. So that's a great one. And then the other one, I finished, I finished these last night actually. My sons were both asking for fingerless mitts. I had made myself some um, and Felicity a pair earlier this year, or I think it was actually last year. And the boys also wanted some. And when my sweet friend Anne sent some yarn, the boys picked out um, skein each that they said that they wanted some fingerless mitts in. So um, I was thinking I'm going to try to make some quick little projects after the two big sweaters. Um, and I decided to cast those on. So the first ones that I cast on were for my youngest, which is Grayson. Um, and he picked this orange. So I made him these. I tried to match them up the best that I can, could. Um, and I think I did pretty good. They're not exactly, but they're pretty close. Um, this yarn, let me tell you who it's by. This is by Turtle Pearl Yarns. Um, and it was actually a 250 gram skeins that are meant to be for, for socks. Um, but he wanted gloves. So I was like, that's fine. I'll just skein up one of the 50 grams. I have the other 50 gram still here in case um, he wants something else made out of it. I could probably even make him a pair of socks out of this one. Um, but this is what I had left for them. I had to, I had to ball off some of the, um, some of the yarn to get to the same spot to start with the brown again. So that's why I have this little one. And then I also have this ball. So those are my leftovers. These took, let me see, I could just pull up my spreadsheet and tell you. Do, do, do. Okay, so these took 31 grams to make. Um, this pattern, you'd probably like to know what pattern I'm talking about, wouldn't you? So this pattern is, if I could bring it up, Everything November Mitts by Jen Yard. I love this pattern. I've made it multiple times and um, yeah, it's really easy to adapt for different sizes. For my boys, I had them try mine on um, and they were a little large for them and they said, we want them tighter, um, which is good because the yarn will stretch out over time anyways. Uh, so I ended up doing 48 stitches to cast on, which is four stitches less than what I, mine are. And I figured that would probably be good enough um, because they're gonna be growing too. Um, ever changing. Um, so my boys are 11 and 12 and that's why they're kind of like in between. But I cast one of my youngest sons on and finished it. And then, you know, they're both looking like, oh, are you making mine? Um, so I cast on my middle kiddo, Kai's, um, also, which are these ones. So I did one of these and then I cast on one of these and then it was kind of working together to keep them to where they would finish at the same time because 
can't have one before the other. Um, but I basically did the exact same thing for both of them. I have all the information on my project pages for you. Um, these are a little bit longer in the hand because when my youngest tried it on, it was a little short. Um, so I just made these, um, I think I did like five, I think I did five extra rounds on these. Um, and this yarn is also a gift from Anne, which is so sweet. And this is Knit Mona. This is the tag for that one. And this is Un Thundercloud. And somehow, even though these are longer, they were only 30 grams. And these were 31 grams. So I guess this is just a heavier weight of yarn. I don't know. But they're going to be really excited to get these today. Um, and I still have a ton left of this yarn, which is good because my husband wants something made out of these, as out of this yarn as well. Um, and this, I think, gobstock, stop, gobstopper yarn. Is that what these are called when they're wound this way? I've never had one wound this way. So it was really fun to kind of get to see the colors and how they were un, unwinding. Um, it's totally a geeky thing. It has nothing to do with the actual project, but I liked that a whole bunch. Um, so yeah, I whipped these up really fast. I started on March 1st and finished last night, which was March 4th. Um, so they worked up really, really fast. Um, and it did help that they were striping. So they, you're obviously wanting to get to the next stripe. And I was trying to keep them as cohesive as I could. Um, and they're a little bit off, but not too bad. And this one, like the thumb is way off, but it's okay. I don't think he'll care. So I'm going to give those to him. Um, and it's really exciting. Everything, all of my finished objects and even my work in progress are all for my family members. So lots of gift knitting, I suppose you could say. Um, but yeah, those were fun. And I am shocked to have had six finished objects. I have one lonely little work in progress to show you. Since last night, late, I finished the gloves. I just went into this project that I started last week um, and put like about an inch or two on it. Um, but this is the only work in progress I have right now. This is not going to last for long. I do plan on castings on some new things, but we'll talk about that in future makes. So this one I'm going to tell you is housed. Can you guess what it's housed in? It's housed in my beautiful cotton Cottontail Farms. Every time I forget, every, every time. You can see there, I love this bag, absolute favorite. Um, so it is housed in that. The yarn, the yarn I'm using, you will know, it is from last time when I saw you guys and I have just been to the Red Alder retreat with my friend Heather and picked up this yarn, which is Nano Stitch Laboratory. Um, and it is her alpaca sport weight in charcoal. Um, this is such a dream to work with. Uh, so, so soft. And I'm a bit jealous that I'm making this for my husband. So what am I making, you might ask? It is the Honey Cow, which is by Antonio, Ant Antonio, Antonia Shakeland. Um, and I am using a US 8, which is what the pattern calls for. It's a little loose, I think, for what I would like, but... I think it's going to work out since it is the cow and it's going to be doubled. Um, this is actually a sports weight yarn, as I said. The pattern calls for DK, I think. Um, but since it is a shawl or a cow scarf type thing, I didn't think it was really going to matter. And I don't think it is. Um, but let me show you what I have. It's a really pretty pattern. Um, this, so the skein of yarn was how many grams? 233 grams. So I caked it up. It's just a massive ball. <laughs> Look how big it is. It's like as big as my head. Um, and I've used quite a bit, but you can see this is a very, very alpaca love ball. I love it so much. Um, so this is what I'm using and I'm loving it. This is what it's looking like. So this is a really fun slip stitch pattern. Um, and I think it's turning out beautifully. I love it so, so much. I probably doubled this last night while we were watching TV. Um, so yeah, 
is really pretty. These are my stitch stoppers by Fox and Pine. They will be linked down below if I could get you there to see them. They are the cute little Oreo ones that I have. Um, and of course, Chiago needles. Um, but yeah, this is what I am currently working on. It's a really fun pattern. Um, very repetitive, like very soothing to watch and something I can watch or knit on not watch something I can knit on while watching TV without really thinking about it too much. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying it. And I know last time I was talking about how my husband wanted a scarf and not a cowl. Um, and then once I looked at the pattern, I kind of decided he was getting a cowl instead of a scarf. So if he wants a scarf afterwards, I'll knit him a scarf. But I think this, I think this is really something that he's going to like a little bit more. Um, and it's just so squishy and soft. Like it is so soft. Um, and the drape is going to be amazing. So I might make this a little wider than it says to in the pattern. Um, we'll just see how it goes. I'll probably have this done this week. Um, but yeah, that is the only work in progress. So hopefully next time you will see this as finished objects. So I have no acquisitions for this podcast. I didn't purchase anything in the last two weeks. So we're just going to skip over that one and go straight to future makes. Oh, there goes my neighbor. Um, <laughs> anyways, I have a few things um, that I'm wanting to make. And obviously, since I only have one thing on my needles at the moment, but I am currently waiting for some yarn. I'm hoping maybe it'll be here this week um, that I ordered back at the end of January. And it is from the Little Wolf, the Little Wolf Knits. Um, she did a special colorway for us in the Love and Stitches membership, and she's been shipping out this past week. Um, so and my sister just got hers yesterday, and my friend Stephanie got her notification of shipment today. So I'm hoping that mine will be in the next couple days as well and I plan to make the something cozy by Shana Billow with that um, me and Stephanie are both going to be making that so it's going to be really fun um, to make it and the yarn is absolutely beautiful so hopefully that will at least be on my needles in the next podcast when I get that yarn I plan to kick it up and start it right away um, and it should go really fast it's DK and lace weight yarn held together on size ten and a half needles I think which is ginormous um so I should go pretty quickly if I if I set my mind to it it might be a finished object next time uh so yeah that is definitely a future make that you will be seeing the next one is Brian wants some mittens made um so I am going to look for a pattern for that he wants them where they don't have any um fingers um so they're just the the like mitten ones i'm trying to just i need to find a pattern so first i need to do that um i'd like it to be fingering weight since i have a whole bunch of fingering weight yarn and could use that to make it um so that will probably be cast on soon as well and then i also need to make order yarn and make the montrealer for my youngest kiddo um, so I should be planning that this week. I just have to decide what yarn I want to use for that. Um, and then there's two things for myself that I want to make. One is the Radvent, which I have made before. And I really love that pattern. It was so fun. I wear it all the time. Excuse me, my nose is like, I think it's the, uh, alpaca is getting to my nose. Um, but I love my Radvent. I wear it all the time. And um, I mentioned before that I saw a fellow member of the Love & Stitches membership who was making it in the Moonglow Yarn Co. Advent from last year. And I have that. And I just love how it looked and how beautiful it is. So I want to do that. Um, and I might cast that on here this week. Um, we'll see. I want something else to work on, but I don't know if I want to cast that on and then get the something cozy yarn and then want to work on that and yeah, just be too much. So we'll see. I'm still deciding and I need to decide also on what yarn I want for the cuffs and the band at the bottom. I want a dark color, I think. Um, and I don't know if I have any dark colors that I necessarily want to use that for. So I might have to order something from Moon Glow. Um, and see if I can get that. And then there's also another one that I saw when I was at SAF. I was actually at the um, Black Mountain Yarn Shop in Black Mountain, North Carolina um, back in October. And 
It is the Eve's Cardigan by Kate Oates. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. I'd actually already had it favorited in my um, on my Ravelry page before I went there, and then I saw it in person, um, and Kate Oates was there, and it was so beautiful, and I really, really want to make it. Every time I see it, I just go, oh, I like that a whole bunch. So um, I'm thinking about maybe also making that in the future. Um, it's the yarn I have to decide do I want to do a cream or I saw some project pages that had like a charcoal that was really pretty um, I think I want to get yarn from Moon Glow for it um, so I just need to decide what color I want and then I was thinking of maybe getting one of her mini skein sets for the color work on the top um, to do that so that's a possibility for that so lots of possibilities, lots of who knows what you might see in two weeks when you see a new podcast. Um, but those are the things that are on my mind right now. It is the first podcast of the month, so it's time to do a stash update, which I am loving so much. I'm so excited that I am doing this and how I am like keeping track of things. Um, so it's been really fun. Um, starting off the month of February, I started with 56 skeins of yarn. Um, and then I'm going to go through and do go through all the numbers and things and just a kind of like I don't even know what to say. Not a, a guideline or whatever. I don't know. I'm not saying the right word. I can't think of the right word. A FYI for your information. I am only counting 100 gram hand dyed yarn as my stash. Um, but when I am doing projects, which I'll talk about in a minute, I am taking all of the yarn, no matter if it's knit picks or if it is... Um, hand dyed and counting those towards my used grams and yards. Hopefully that wasn't confusing and I made sense. But anyways, so with the actual stash, let's go through it. So beginning, I started the beginning of February, I started with 56 skeins. Um, skeins used in projects, which means I started the project, took the skeins and actually started using them, um, were four. I purchased four skeins also. So the ones that I purchased, let me bring it up here. Okay, here we go. So I purchased um, two skeins from, that's not, that's a lie, hold on. I purchased two skeins from the store in um, Seattle that I went to, Acorn Street store. Um, that was in Seattle. And then I also purchased two other skeins at the Red Alder retreat that I went to over in Tacoma. Um, so those were a DK weight, a lyrical fiber, the nano stitch that I just showed you guys um, that I'm using for the cow, and then also the quantum entanglement skein um, that was just so, so soft that I had to have. So those were the four that I ended up purchasing. The four that I used um, was the Cascade Heritage that I used for Felicity's cow, and then I also used a nano stitch lab for her cow. Wait, was the Cascade Heritage? What was that one? It wasn't the cow. Anyways, it was for something. It was for something. I know it's there. And then I used the Tree House Knits for the Muscle Burrow and the Nano Stitch Lab. I took it out since I started the um, cow on the last day of February. So those were the four that I used. Um, and then I was so blessed and I was gifted 13. Actually, that's not true. I was gifted 15. I was gifted 15 skeins of yarn by my friends Heather and Anne, which was just so, so sweet. Um, and those, hold on, yes, there were 15 of them, and I ended up, four of them are going to prizes, and my children and husband picked things to make out of the other 11 skeins. Um, so the total at the beginning of March is 65 skeins. So I went up nine skeins. Did I go up nine? No, it's not 65, it's 67. I was having a con I was having issues with this because my friend Heather gave me two and Anne gave me quite a few, so I kept forgetting to add Heather's to the ones that Anne gave me. Anyways, beyond the point. It's 67 is the total number. So I am plus 11 skeins this month of 
February, starting off the month in March. That's okay though. I have lots of plans to knit with them. I've already knit with two of the skeins um, that Anne has given me and that was in March. So those will come out of my March numbers. Um, but that was really exciting to kind of see how that ebbed and flowed. Like purchasing and using, I actually evened out. I purchased for and I used for. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and then the generosity of people was just so sweet. So I'm very thankful and grateful for that. Um, and then I have some other really fun numbers. So um, in, let me see, let me bring it up. Oh, where did I put you? There you are. Okay. So in January, the total amount of grams I used, and those are when the project is finished. Um, so even if I started the project in December, in January when it's finished is when I will count those grams and those yards as being completed. Um, so total January was 376 grams. And then yards was 1,573. But for February, I finished two sweaters and quite a few other things, which was really exciting. So my numbers jumped quite a bit. For February, I finished with 1,483 grams used and yards was 398.38 yards. Almost 4,000 yards was knit. I mean, some of it was knit in January, yes, but all of it was knit this year, which is so crazy to me. Um, so that's a lot and I'm doing actual grams. So I measure the skein before I knit it and then after I knit it and get how much of them I actually actually knit um, as to the best of my abilities. But that's so wild. Isn't that crazy? I absolutely love those numbers and how much it jumped. That is February is definitely going to be an abnormal month. I'm not going to have 4,000 yards every month. Um, but yeah, I really, really like that. It's really fun. So yeah, those are my numbers for February and I'm excited to see where March ends up. I know I'm going to be having some skeins come in because um, I'm waiting on that order from um, the Little Wolf Knits and then I might order some from Moonglow. So we'll see how it goes. I might go up some more, but that's okay because I'm still using things from Stash and um, I'm getting things finished and made and I'm enjoying doing it so that's the best part. So we're going to get into some live stuff but before we do that we have some prizes to give away. So um, I was giving away this amazing t-shirt which you can see right here um, back in my very first episode of the year and the winner never contacted me so it is time to fix pick another winner for this. So this is going to be going to, I cannot say the last name and I don't want to butcher it. So I'm just going to say Jessica and put your comment up on the screen for you. Um, she says that my 2023 goal is to knit more and more and more. I started knitting project plan and hopefully I'll be able to stick to it and be more organized in my upcoming projects. She says she loves watching my videos while knitting and drinking tea. It brings her joy. The Happy New Year. So thank you so much, Jessica. That is so sweet. If you will just contact me, this will be yours and a few other goodies that I'm going to throw in. Um, and I would love to get this to you. So if you'll email me at gypsy.bird47 at gmail.com, it'll be down here. I always stumble on it, but it'll be down here. If you'll just email me with your mailing address, I'll get this shipped out to you. And then last podcast, we also had a beautiful giveaway. Thanks to my friend, Anne. Um, and I have gone ahead and picked that winner as well. It's for these two gorgeous skeins of yarn. And that one is going to be Craftsy Wendy. So her, her comment was, I'm a Trekkie and a Star Wars geek as well. Yes. And love all things sci-fi. Her dream trip would go to Holland, which is her ancestral home on her mom's side, which is so cool. She's the third generation born in the United States, which how neat is that? Um, so Holland is where she would like to go. Um, and I would love to visit there sometime too. I want to go everywhere all the time. So Wendy, if you will also send me an email with your mailing address, that would be amazing. And I will get these two beautiful skeins, thanks to Anne, shipped out to you. So thank you guys so much. 
Ah, what a fun time it has been chatting with you guys and showing you all of my finished objects. Honestly, the last two weeks, we haven't done much at all. Um, my hair is falling down, um, but we haven't done much at all. Brian has started working and um, we've just kind of been getting back into the groove of, you know, doing all the things and all of life's things. So that's probably why I have gotten so much knitting done because we haven't been exploring or doing much. Um, Brian has about a week off coming up soon and I hope to do a couple of things during that week um, since we'll have that kind of extra time where he's not adjusting to daylight from the working night shift and things like that. Um, so hopefully next time I'll have some more exciting things to share with you. But honestly, we've just been vegging. <laughs> um, I've had no motivation to do things, so hopefully we'll get some. Um, but we have been watching lots of TV, um, which has been fun and great. Uh, with the kids, we have been watching Star Wars. Um, they have finally, finally wanted to watch it, and we made it through all 11 movies. So we started with episode one, went through to episode nine, um, and then we watched Solo and Rogue One, um, and they enjoyed all of those. My youngest has actually already been re-watching a few of them, which makes my heart so happy. Um, and now we have started on The Mandalorian. We just finished the first season of that um, and are about to go into season two, and then we need to watch Boba Fett with them, and then we'll start season three of The Mandalorian. Um, we have decided to wait until the kids are at season three to watch it with them, um, which is killing me, and I'm trying to avoid spoilers. Uh, but I think it'll be good in the long run to do that. Um, but yeah, that's been really great. We've been spending like most of when Brian's off, most of our nights are spent watching either one of the movies or two or three episodes of The Mandalorian. So it's been really fun to do and to be able to see their love for something that I love, especially at their age so much and was so passionate about. Um, so that's fun. My little nerdy geeky kids. I love it so much. Um, Brian and I just finished the first season of 1923 last night. Um, I had watched 1883 back almost a little over a year ago, I think, and absolutely loved it. Fell in love with it. So, so good. Um, and if you don't know, it's a prequel. They're prequels to the Yellowstone show, which I actually have not seen. Um, but I think we might start watching that as well. Um, but these are like the prequels of the family and how they kind of get to Montana and things like that. And we have lived in Montana and been to Yellowstone, the park itself and that area. So it's really fun because we kind of know the area a little bit. Um, but Brian showed an interest in wanting to watch 1923. So I told him he had to watch 1883 first. So we watched that and finished it um, probably like a week ago. Um, and then we started on 1923, which I waited to watch with him. I was a very good wife. I told him he did not know how good of a wife I was for waiting. <laughs> I love Harrison Ford. So that was that that was drawing me. And also I just loved 1883 so much. So we just finished it last night. It was not I'm not happy with how they ended things. I was like, when are we more having more episodes? And then I realized that was the last one and I'm not very happy. At least there's a season two, but yeah. Um, one thing that was really disappointing though is the amount of like nudity and immature content in 1923. We skip all those parts. Um, it's just not needed there's that doesn't bring anything to the story and it's just it's frustrating really so that and and the cussing which they had in 1883 as well I can look past that a little bit but um yeah it, that was really frustrating to me to have that in there and we'd have to skip scenes and it's it's just kind of frustrating but overall I still really enjoyed the show um but just if if you plan to watch either of them, 1883 has a tiny bit of mature content. 1923 has a lot. Not like Outlander a lot, but, you know, there's some in there. Um, but, yeah, so that was good, I think. <laughs> I liked it. I really enjoyed it. I love period dramas. Period dramas and sci-fi, they're my thing. Um, so, yeah, I really love it. And I'm looking forward to 
season two. Um, another thing is the aspect of seeing kind of what happened to the Native Americans is so, it's hard to watch because that was so not that long ago really it was only less than 100 or 100 years ago it was 1923 um and that the white man thought that they could come in and do that to the native americans and to the african americans and um it's just how did people think that that was okay i don't i don't get it and it's hard to watch and um see that but knowing that that was actually part of it um it's heartbreaking for sure and it makes you kind of feel ashamed to be on this land because it's not really ours. Anyways, I'm going down a rabbit hole, but, um, anyways, things that I have just been watching alone. Um, I finished the first half of season of you, um, on Netflix, which is wild. It's so wild. The person that I thought was going to be the murderer is the murderer. Although I think that they could have, if they, if he doesn't have an, if he or she doesn't have an accomplice, then they missed an opportunity. I'm just going to say that because I think there's someone else who could be a very good accomplice for the killer. But anyways, that's that. Um, and I'm also in the middle of the second season of Ginny and Georgia. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's kind of like a Gilmore Girls on steroids um, and not as wholesome, but it's, it's quite interesting. And I kind of, I enjoy that as well. So I have those two things that I've been watching. Oh, and we've also been watching um, the last season of Picard. Um, it's been so good so far. I love seeing all the um, older members um, from Next Generation come back. Um, it's always fun to see that. So we've been enjoying that as well. Um, and up next to watch for me, I want to watch the newest season of The Crown, which I'm behind on. And what was the other thing? Oh, um, the third season of Outer Banks. Um, it's not my favorite show, but I've seen the two other seasons, so I have to see the third one. That's just how it is. <laughs> um, and then one other thing that we watched was the Murdoch Murders, um, Netflix documentary. That's crazy. So if you like documentaries or true crime things, check that out. Um, especially you've probably been hearing in the news all about it. Um, but yeah, definitely check that out. And I have just talked far, far too much about TV and things. So yeah, <laughs> let me know what you guys have been watching. Anything I should check out. Um, do you like any of the things that I like? I'd love to hear it. I think that's all I got to tell you. I've gone through all of my notes. Um, so yeah, it's been great. I'm going to, uh, go figure out what we're going to eat for dinner and get this uploaded for you guys. I hope that you are having a great March. Um, I'll be back on the 20th with another episode. Um, and hopefully I'll be having another kind of exploring Washington vlog coming out soon. Oh, I just got a notification that my little wolf knits order just got the shipping notification. Yes. Now that really puts me in a dilemma. Do I start the Radvent or do I wait? probably should wait because I'll probably be here like Wednesday. Bummer. But not a bummer. I'm excited to get it. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go before I ramble anymore. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. It is the Nano Stitch Lab -tory, Laboratory. In your heart, I'm left behind. We'll start again. My neighbor keeps making a lot of noise. Hopefully you can't hear that. Pain inside. Cause I'm going along with the love is gone.